first Zelda game was released in 1986 in Japan. Ever since then, leading up to 2023, it has become one of the most successful and well-recognized franchises in the entirety of gaming. Similar to Mario, you'll almost rarely ever meet a person who has not heard of Zelda. Some people still, accidentally, messing up Link's identity with Zelda's funny enough. I know I used to make that mistake a long, long time ago when I was younger. However, this video is probably going to piss you off. But I do think that you should stick around to the end of it because everything will make sense and become a lot more clear. I've hated the Zelda franchise for pretty much 28 years. I've hated it. Hated it. Despised of it. Uh, actually, despise would be too harsh of a word. And I think hate is also too much of a strong word. I didn't really understand it. I didn't understand the hype. I didn't understand the charm. It was one of those series that for the longest time I never played because I just simply wasn't interested in it. However, one day I decided enough is enough and I need to see why people cherish and hold Zelda so near and dear to their hearts. The first one that I tried was Ocarina of Time and to no avail. I couldn't really get into it, so I just figured, eh, maybe this one isn't for me. I skipped Majora's Mask because, well, for the longest time I didn't really know it existed. And even upon seeing it, even with the creepy undertones, and I am a fan of horror games, I decided that I was just going to wait and see if something else catches my eye. The GameCube releases and then we have the Wind Waker. However, I didn't even play the Wind Waker on the GameCube. In fact, I skipped that one as well and I ended up playing Twilight Princess to which I got pretty far in Twilight Princess, but I didn't like it enough to complete it. I deemed the game being okay and then I just moved on. Time passes and the Wii comes out with Skyward Sword and it's just another installment in the franchise that I just straight up did not care to even try. But Wind Waker got re-released on the Wii U, and I said, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have skipped this one. I'm going to try it out. I turned it on, and yeah, it just wasn't for me. Turned it off. More time passed, and there was rumors about an open-world Zelda experience hitting the Wii U and, of course, the then-Nintendo Switch. I figured I'd grab it. Because one, it's a recognizable franchise, and two, I needed a game for my Switch on launch. So I grabbed the Breath of the Wild. But I didn't even play it when it came out. I ended up not playing it for a long time, actually. And then one day while I streamed on Twitch, I just booted it up randomly. Hey, let's let's play this. Let me see what why everybody's going so crazy over this game. I boot it up, and immediately I'm thrown into this open world environment of despair. But honestly, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't have any attachment to Link. In fact, Link was more of a Super Smash Brothers character to me than an actual Legend of Zelda character. Didn't care for Zelda at all as well. She wasn't really a popular character for me in Smash. And quite frankly, in Ultimate, I despise her the way she fights. But regardless, I go into this world and i'm just playing to play and i realize wait a minute this is pretty fun i don't know what's going on i don't know the lore i don't know what i'm supposed to be doing i don't really have any direction but i'm enjoying myself i played for about four hours and i was doing this because i needed to go to a tournament and so i was just playing something until i left i leave and i realize damn all this time passed and it passed so quick realizing that i was really enjoying myself i put the game down I say, when I get back, we'll continue. I get back after that weekend. I stop playing. Years have passed now. It is now 2023. And on the day of recording this video, I can comfortably say that I have completed The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. All 120 base game shrines. All memories unlocked. True ending secured. Ganon slain in my opinion of the series in its entirety as well as that game in general has evolved through these couple of days of playing it is may 2nd 2023 by the way at the time i finished the game i decided to go live with breath of the wild simply because i was bored 
I had nothing to do. Tears of the Kingdom was on the horizon, but I wasn't even paying attention to any of the trailers, any of the showcases, and nothing. I didn't care at all. Like, literally, my care was negative. I boot up Breath of the Wild again, leaving off in the same early place that I left off before, not knowing how to do shrines well, not knowing any of Link's abilities, just a deer in the headlights, not knowing anything that's going on. In fact, honestly, when I got into a shrine, I was going to quit because I got stuck and I was like, ah, this is frustrating board. Lack of patience, lack of effort. However, my chat kept pushing me to keep giving the game a try, keep giving it a try. And I did. Sooner rather than later, I started to realize that fun, that enjoyment, that sense of discovery that I had felt when I played it many years back, it started to return and I kept playing and I kept playing to the point where it didn't really matter if I was live or not. If I was not streaming, I was still playing Breath of the Wild, ignoring all the other games that I wanted to play or I thought I was going to be playing. This was really not in my cards this year at all. I go live, maybe I start with Smash, but I end up going straight to Breath of the Wild. At first, it became a hassle because my chat kept pushing me to play. I didn't really have any desire, but sooner than later, they didn't have to do anything at all. I just decided I'm going to keep playing. And so my grind to get all the shrines, to get the master sword, the Hyrule shield, everything. I wanted to really just let myself be taken away by the world that was Breath of the Wild. I wanted to, get every single thing I possibly could to understand not only the lore but to just continuously get stronger and stronger and fight as many enemies as possible and even with the game completed I still feel like I haven't fully explored it at all and there's still so much more content to go back and do. My goal became at a point not to just play Breath of the Wild, it was to beat it, get its true ending in time for Tears of the Kingdom. But this is crazy, as someone that is disliked the Legend of Zelda series for so long, how is it that this one specific game was able to change my entire opinion on it so fast? The answer is simple. The game encompasses you in, I want to say, such a free form style where you are literally able to do anything. I never really played a game where I was able to navigate the terrain so naturally to the point where there were so many ways to do things. If you ever felt stuck, there might have been more than one way to actually get out of a situation. If you wanted to climb somewhere and reach somewhere that feels unreachable, there's definitely probably a way for you to get there. There's multiple ways to beat bosses, beat enemies. It felt so, I wanna say, free. And honestly, when it comes to just the music, everything was perfectly built up. The atmosphere allows you to really feel as if you were out traversing the wild in a place that once was filled with life and joy, but is now fell to despair from the evil that is Ganon. There was a lot of lore that I didn't even know about the old games and little Easter eggs that were able to make their way into this game. Most notably, the hill for Satori Wada that was beautiful. I had no idea that he even had a hand in this game. Someone so legendary and well respected and loved by all of us gamers. Learning about the four champions was also nice. It made me really sad that they met their demise by the hands of the, you know, the Ganon Blights, but it, man, I have to sigh here because I, just beating the game today has actually just taken me aback. But to be able to connect with so many different characters and just like the character development throughout the game was just so nice to see. I felt attached to characters that almost felt like we briefly met them. But at the same time, it feels like we knew them for an eternity. And so honestly, outside of just the natural gameplay, the ability to cook, which is kind of fun sometimes, the exploration, characters, the world itself, 
the beautiful music that also helps again set the tone for the entire atmosphere as I've already mentioned. You kind of feel like you're not even here anymore, aka on Earth. You really feel like you're sinking into this other world and it truly felt like an escape. An escape that I don't really feel from most games anymore nowadays, honestly. Funny enough, as beautiful as gaming is and how it's always been an escape, it feels like a lot of games nowadays kind of miss the mark on what it truly means to create a world. Open world games have gotten more popular over time, especially you've seen games like take inspiration directly from Breath of the Wild, but I feel like it is hard to recreate a formula so well crafted to the point where I'm confused as to how they even did this as good as they did. And so now that I've learned all this stuff regarding the Legend of Zelda, the lore, the characters, it makes me want to go back and revisit those experiences that I disliked when I was younger to see if I could appreciate them more now. It's funny, when you meet gamers, naturally, most of them have played a lot of the Zelda series. Me, as old as I am now, to have not actually played Majora's Mask, gotten far enough in Ocarina of Time, tried Skyward Sword, given Wind Waker a real chance, not to mention the 2D Zelda games. There is a lot to uncover. And to be honest, as popular as Breath of the Wild is, I still do see some people say that it just wasn't for them or that it's not even the best game in the entire series. I'm not really here to debate which game is the best or which game is your favorite or which game could have been my favorite. I'm simply here to appreciate the chance of having to play something that I did not care about in the slightest and it ended up becoming not only one of my favorite games of all time but a game that actually alone saved my entire interest in the series. I thought I would go my entire life without ever ever caring about a Zelda game ever and for Breath of the Wild to not only make me fall in love with it but make me want to try other Zelda games is a testament to just how strong the design behind that game is and the love and attention to every detail. I didn't have to wait the hard wait that Zelda fans had to wait for Tears of the Kingdom. I came just in time. I got lucky. Just by some unnatural coincidence, I decided to play this game, enjoy it and beat it in time for the game to release in just a couple days, which now is pretty much throw my schedule off whack because I'm just going to go straight to Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> but I guess all in all what I'm trying to say is is that this was an experience that I won't forget. And to be honest, with the way the game ended, with the true ending, with such a cinematic boss fight, a cinematic boss fight that paid homage to those that fell to Ganon, and you all come together giving the champions a second chance to strike back and make up for their demise back in 100 years in the past and for link to be there with them cheering him on zelda also helping with her powers you really felt like you went through all of that with them and so after you actually beat ganon in his first phase that was crazy and you fight him in his true form and you're on that horse and you got that bow of light and you're just popping them over and over and over. It really did feel like a masterpiece was happening before my eyes and I didn't really even realize it was a masterpiece until the credits rolled and the final extra cutscenes played. This, in my opinion, is a legendary game. This is a game that you don't see too often come out. There are great games out there that come out 100%. But for masterpieces, games that are true 10 out of 10s, gems, everybody should play them. Those are a dime a dozen. And I'm happy to say that I was able to actually not only encompass myself in a brand new series for me personally, but I'm happy that this will be a game that I will remember for the rest of my life. 
This was truly beautiful. Thank you so much for watching.